Welcome back to UHF Horizon. Tonight I'll be pulling back the curtain by showing you how the VR360 videos are built. Starting with the thought process, why go a resource demanding root? Well, with past UHF videos there felt like a detach. Just no matter what interaction with the audience, it still felt cold. This is the reality with digital avatars, but there was room for improvement. End of your video. Yes, us avatars are still kind of cold, but at least it feels more like you're in the scene with us. Like hanging out in the garage watching trailers, or following me as I show you the newest car builds. It is still very rough, but the goal is to make you the viewer really feel like you're part of this world. Over time you will get to know the characters better, and heck, you may even have some favorites. For this demonstration, I'm using my clone version 8.12. The track and avatar are already loaded in, so let's rig them up. Now I'm going to apply the reach effectors for both hands, both feet, both toes, and the hip. With applying a reach dummy to a prop, go to attribute in the modified tab, scroll down to attach, and select the desired prop as the parent. So for this, seam the right foot and toe reach dummies will attach to the gas pail prop. I like to use the vehicle itself as the parent for the left foot and toe dummies in an automatic car. Unless the avatar is using the feet to drive. The left and right hand reach dummies will be parented to the steering wheel. Then to animate the wheel, I select the prop puppet, local rotate, and match the movement on the screen. Just make sure the pivot point is aligned with the steering wheel so it rotates correctly. The hip reach effector is good for if the avatar needs to reach over for, say, the ignition. This reach dummy is usually attached to the driver's seat. So with everything rigged up, the avatar needs to have subtle movements to appear more lifelike. To achieve this, one, in the attribute section of the modify tab, make sure the avatar blinks. 2. Slide over to the Animate section and click Motion Puppet. Mask out the hands, arms, and legs. Then select an idle animation. Go over to the slides to adjust posture and preview. Once you have positioning and speed calibrated, click Record. The Avi file used for the final render will be a monster. The UTS videos with Denise was over for 100 gigabytes. My clone is being run on a solid state drive, so usually space isn't issues. That AVI file would eat up the whole drive. Instead, the lowest quality AVI file is used in its place. It is space friendly, and as a plane it can be moved around the scene as needed. The other issue requiring the jumpy AVI is that redirecting to the big AVI on another drive makes real-time editing impossible. The software gets bound up and lag city appears using the smaller file as key. At this point with the avatar animation complete, it's time to bring in the screen. Go to the content tab, click on prop, 3D space, and select tower. You'll have to make a few adjustments to the scale, but once it is to your liking, select the 24-bit uncompressed AVI file. Once the screen size is readjusted, the video is self-illuminated 100%. Flips horizontally in the UV settings since it imports and backwards, and GA settings tweaked to your liking so that it puts flashes of light from the screen. I created a camera in the car and positioned it where I think I like it. At this point it's render time. Since any unseen mistake will be a timely one, I like to click the Enable 360 Panorama box, drop quality to 3, no into aliasing, and render 1 second to make sure 1. The screen borders aren't visible, 2. The lighting is correct, and 3. The camera is in the proper location. Once you are happy with this, go back to the Render tab, slide the quality to 8, enable 3x3 three three anti aliasing and kiss your computer goodbye for a day or two. On VR renders, a 3090 with a 12-core CPU takes around 3 hours for a 1000 frames. The 5 minute ATS video took 27 hours to render, and the trailer revealed took 30 hours. 
The trailer reveal had many characters, props, and lights so it took a little longer than an in-car render. Hopefully this helps you build your own VR experiences. The 3D tower trick would work great with sci-fi or plane scenes as well. Maybe UHF may take to the air or stars at some point. Who knows? Well, thank you so much for watching. There's been a bunch of new subscribers, so thank you for clicking that subscribe button. To all my longtime subs, thank you for liking and watching the videos. And if you haven't yet, subscribe and click the notification bell. It helps out this channel immensely. Thank you again, and have a good night.